Hey guys, I'm April from Giggle Glitter Graphics, and today I'm going to show you how to print and cut junk journal ephemera on a Cricut machine. There are a couple ways to do this, and there are pros and cons to each. I'm going to show you how to print and cut a sheet as is, and then I'll show you how to pick and choose items and kind of adjust their sizes a bit. So I'm going to go up to the top left corner and pick canvas. So this is gonna bring me to my canvas area. I'm going to select upload, upload image, browse. And then I'm going to pick one of my junk journal pages. These are all JPEGs, you can use PNGs. They might not have a background, that's fine. You'll just skip one of the steps. I'm gonna grab this one here. It has a lot of lace pieces on it. It's gonna be super fussy. I'm going to select complex and continue down at the bottom. So now it's pulled my image in. I'm gonna zoom in just a little bit and you can see there's a white background around all of this. To get rid of that, I am just going to click it. However, I'm going to show you the settings for this option real quick. So it, down here on the left, it have, you have different tools. This is the select tool. I'm going to go to more options. Now, sometimes when I click to remove these backgrounds, it'll cut into something that's maybe cream colored or something like that. I do try to put a little line around all my new printables, but sometimes it wants to chomp in there anyway. So I've started changing the color tolerance down to three. So that's just, oops, how many colors, get that back open. That's how many colors it will select. I tried one and one left some weird little spots around edges here and there. So I went ahead and went with three. You can play with this setting a little bit, but that's what I'm gonna to use today. So just take and click on that white background and it cuts it right out. Now to get rid of anything you don't want to print and cut, so in this case, this text at the top, I'm going to swap to the erase tool. And I'm gonna make this eraser larger just to make it faster and then just click and drag it across and erase that. You can do this for anything that you don't want to print and cut. So if I wanted to like cut some of these out, I could do that. Now we're just about there. I'm going to show you there's this preview cut image. Go ahead and you might want to toggle that. You don't have to, but I can look for anything weird. And you can see there is a little bit of some artifacts along here for whatever reason. You can erase those, you can leave them. It might cut them, it might not. Uh, I'm gonna leave them, I don't think it's a big deal. And I don't see any big chomping bites out of <laughs> some of these other things. And I'll, I'll try to maybe pull in a piece later and show you what I mean by that. I'm gonna hide the cut image, everything looks good. I'm going to apply and continue and then select print, then cut image and click upload. This could take a moment depending on your internet speed. You can see I actually have this. I did, I did a test run earlier. So I'm gonna select my new one and down in the bottom right hand corner, I'm gonna click add to canvas. Now you can see this is way too big. This is about 16 inches wide. That's almost twice what it should be, but you can just pop over to this little exclamation mark here and click auto resize image, and it's going to make it fit the print and cut space. You can see the dimensions at 6.76 inches by 8.69 inches. That is about the largest it can cut. If you make it more narrow, you can make it a little taller. This will shrink things just a little bit. So these lace pieces are sized, if you were to just print them and cut them out by hand, they are sized to be belly bands across the middle of a page. But when I print and cut them, they're going to be about half an inch smaller. And I'm gonna show you how to, how to work around that later on. But right now, we're just gonna do a simple print and cut. So everything looks good. I'm gonna click make it. And you can see the red outlines around here. This is going to be important later. You can kind of puzzle things in a bit and get more out of this space. But for now, this looks fine. We've hit the edges right um, on the right, left and right. This is really as big as it can go. I'm happy with that. I'm going to click continue and then send to printer. On this page, you have a couple of options. I've got my printer selected. Add bleed is on. This is optional. I like add bleed because it puts a little colored border that matches each item around it. 
And then if your cut is just slightly off, there's some dye there, there's some ink there to kind of fill that space. My cutter is pretty close to on, but I like to leave it on, there's some fudge room there. You're also going to wanna to click Use System Dialog. And this is important because you need to make sure you're printing at 100% or actual size or else your cuts are going to be off, it won't line up. Click Print. It could take a moment because it is quite large. It's a little bigger. And you're going to go to Preferences for your printer. And from here, you're going to do two things. The first thing you wanna do is look at your print quality. I want mine to be high. I'm just gonna change this. My drop-down box is not getting picked up by my screen recorder. So I'm clicking, there's a drop-down box. I usually go to high or more settings and there will be a slider that pops up and I'll send it all the way to the top. And then I'm gonna to go to more options and this is the side size settings. I'm going to go to wherever my size settings are. They're probably gonna be in a different place if you have a different printer. They might look differently. I'm going to set zoom to 100%. If you have a setting that says actual size, you can use that as well, or zoom to 100%. I'm gonna click OK, and then click Print. All right, we are at my work desk. I've got my Cricut machine here. I'll pull that into frame soon. And I've got my printed sheet and my mat. And I'm just gonna line this up on the top left corner really quickly. So right on there, bring my machine over. Now I'm gonna set with this cardstock, I like to set to cardstock plus. If you have a thinner cardstock, you might want a thinner cardstock setting. You can print on sticker paper, you can print on vellum, you can print on regular paper, <laughs> it's, it's endless. Um, I will try to list what specific papers I purchase and use and their settings in the description down below. For this one, I'm using Cardstock Plus. I find that's the setting I need to cut all the way through. You can see my Cricut is on, it's connected, it's ready for me to load, so it's flashing that light. Let me just move over a little bit so you can see in frame. I'm going to put my mat in all the way here to the left. Click load. And now it's gonna light up that it's ready to cut. I'm going to press cut and let it do its thing. All right, I'm all cut out. I'm just going to press that unload button, get my Cricut machine out of the way and pull everything off the mat. You can see I did get some little cuts here where those artifacts were. Again, you can erase those if that bothers you. It doesn't bother me. Not worried about it being perfect. Everything pulls off pretty neatly. We're all lined up. <laughs> Everything is good. Now I'm gonna talk real quickly about these pieces. And I've got a piece of paper here. This is a, an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper folded in half like we would do for our junk journals. And you can see that it has shrunk a little. I had designed it so it would fit nice and neat. This might not bother you. You can just cut your pages down or use it on another element or, you know, creativity is endless with junk journals. But if that bothers you and you're like, no, I really want those belly bands. They need to be belly bands. I'm gonna show you how to print and cut at specific sizes and also how to pick and choose items from your junk journal pages and create your own little print and cut sheet. So we're gonna head back to the computer. All right, we're back to our canvas in Cricut Design Space and I'm gonna go back to upload. Now I'm going to click Upload Image, Browse, and we are going to go ahead and select that exact same image for the purposes of this tutorial. Click Complex, Continue. Now let's say I only want these belly bands or I want to print these belly bands again, but at the appropriate size. I'm going to go with the Crop Tool. It is up here in the top left. So now I am cropping and I can just crop out the exact item that I want. And there it is, all zoomed in. We can crop that even further, make it tighter. Remember we had some weird little artifacts. Let's see, there we go. <laughs> trying to get it to cooperate with me. It's a, it's a little finicky, but there we go. All right, so we're cropped in nice and tight. I did leave some space all around the edges. That's gonna make it easier. Let's go back to this little picture view with the background remover. 
I'm going to go to more options. I am going to change that color tolerance to three. That is my preference. Again, play with that. Play with that setting and see where it gets you with what you want. And I'm going to click that white background and get rid of it. Now, if you've got a complex fussy cut and you want to cut out all these little things, you could click the background remover in there and try to get it to cut all of that out and make it like super lacy. I don't have the patience for that, <laughs> but that's something you could do. Or if it's a, not as complex as lace and you want to go through, you can go through and cut, uh, remove all those little backgrounds all the way through and make your fussy things extra fussy. So let's preview that cut image. Looks nice and clean. You don't really have to hide this. I'm just going to do it. Apply and continue. We're going to select print, then cut image, upload. All right. So now you can see we have just our little lacy bits. So I'm going to click those and do add to canvas. Now from here is where you can play with the size. We know that they were designed as belly bands in this case. You might not always know that. And it's for a belly band across the short part of the page. So I'm actually with this little lock selected. And we know that the height on these, because they're, they're up and down <laughs> instead of side to side, should be five and a half inches. So I can put in 5.5 and it will shrink those down. And now I know that they're five and a half inches long ways. Now you can repeat this. You can add more items to this page. So I could go to upload. I can go to upload image. I can browse. And let's say I want to grab here. There's this sheet. It's got some letters. It's got some labels and things. Let's say I want those labels. So we're going to go complex, continue. I'm going to use the selection tool. Well, I'm going to crop first, go to crop. Crop out, we can zoom in to get a little bit of a more accurate crop. Crop these out, right like that. Background remover, more options, setting my color tolerance to three or your preferred color tolerance. Clicking the background, got rid of that. I'm gonna preview my cut image, nothing weird there. And apply and continue. Print, then cut image, upload, and now add to canvas. All right, so these are pretty big. We're going to want to make them smaller. I'm going to kind of look at my ruler up here and just resize these so that the labels are more of about a couple inches for the, the large ones and an inch and a half for the smaller ones. And that looks like a pretty good size for me. I just wanted small labels. You could definitely print these larger. Please keep in mind that if you print these larger than they are on the original sheet, you may lose some quality. So if I went ahead and printed them at this size, they would print and cut, but they might be a little blurry or pixelated or something like that. So I'm going to downsize these. I'm going to make them like two inches wide, about an inch and a half wide for the eh, thereabouts. And I'm going to place those right under these belly bands. So that I can print and cut those together. From here, these should all fit on the same page. So I'm going to go to make it and let's see. And here you can see it is fitting all on the page. I've got my red boundaries here and I do have room for even more things. I can add some more stuff on here. I could pick out a couple more items and put them in. So you can just continue this process and keep adding items to your page until you've kind of maxed out that space. Now let's go back, cancel. Let's say I left it big. All right, it's huge. I'm gonna put it down below here. Let's see what happens. I'm gonna to go to make it. And now it has taken and it has made me two different print and cuts. So I have a print and cut number one. There's actually that entire huge labels, which could print blurry. Again, keep that in mind. They might print okay. They might look fine for your junk journal. That's something to play around with to see if you can get bigger stuff from your little things. And then I've got sheet number two that has my belly bands on it. So these would each print individually. And then the Cricut machine will prompt you which one to put in. 
and you will cut it just like we print and cut the regular just plain old sheet. So I hope that you found this tutorial super helpful. I hope it's inspired you to make the most out of your junk journal ephemera sheets on with your Cricut. <laughs> there is so much potential here to just pick and choose the items that you want or if you're like me I just slap down a page and <laughs> let it print the whole thing out and work with what I have most of the time. Uh, I'm not going to lie, I did uh, I did print and cut out these belly bands on their own because I really wanted them to fit really nicely on some of my larger pages. <laughs> this is my Dark Forest Junk Journal Add-on Kit. It's new in my shop just as of today, the making of this video. And I'm going to be using these in my Dark Forest Journal, so keep an eye out for that video. If you found this video helpful or you have additional questions, please, please comment down below. I'd love to hear what you have to say. As always, thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video.